Welcome to this series of podcasts on the new and very exciting 12C SQL pattern matching feature. My name is Keith Laker and I'm a Senior Principal Product Manager for Data Warehousing and Big Data at Oracle. If you have any questions about SQL pattern matching, please feel free to contact me via my blog. This is the first in a three-part series of podcasts that will cover the following topics. Introduction to pattern matching. Next, we'll look at SQL pattern matching concepts, syntax, and review some demonstrations. And finally, we'll look at some real world use cases. So what is pattern matching all about? Patterns are usually defined as a repetitive series or sequence of specific events or actions, and they occur everywhere in business. The ability to find, analyze, and quantify individual or groups of patterns within a data set is now a key business requirement. It can help you gain a better understanding of your customer's behavior and associated operational activities, seek out new opportunities to drive additional revenue streams, and even help identify malicious activities that could lead to your business incurring significant costs. Here's a real world business case from a telecommunications company that is trying to understand how the SIM cards in its phones are actually being used by its customers. The company suspects that some of its SIM cards are being used in multiple handsets and they want to look for the pattern where a SIM card goes from phone A to phone B to phone C and then back to phone A within a specified time period and where this pattern is repeated multiple times within a seven day period. This is an important business case because this type of pattern can cost telecommunication companies a lot of money for a number of different reasons. To search for this type of pattern, developers have typically used multiple self joins along with connect by, with clauses and window functions. But this makes the SQL quite complicated. Is there a better, simpler way than using self joins with connect by and window functions? What do we need to help us search for these types of patterns? Let's look at a different data set to explain the type of syntax we need to help us search for patterns. This time, let's consider a flight arrival and departure data set. There are already pattern matching declarative languages such as Perl that allow us to create statements such as A plus B C. This would allow us to search for one or more instances of event A, followed by one instance of event B, followed by one instance of event C, and we might add an additional requirement that the whole pattern should occur within a one minute interval. So what is needed is a native SQL construct that will allow us to search across row boundaries. The solution should align itself with well-known regular expression declarative languages such as Perl. Oracle Database 12C provides such a feature, and this will be incorporated into the ANSI SQL standard. The following slides will provide more information about. This new feature is Match Recognize and is part of Oracle Database 12C. Let's start with a simple example based on a data set for a ticker stream where we have stock price over time in this case for each day. Within the data set, we want to look for W-shaped patterns where the price goes down, then up, then down, and finally up again. Once we've found a W-shaped pattern, we want to return the start date and the end date for the pattern. We want to calculate the average price during the second up leg of our W-shape but we're only looking for W-shaped patterns that lasted less than seven days. Of course, we can search across multiple ticker symbols within our data set, but in the following slides, we'll limit the data set to a single ticker stream to keep things simple. To create our pattern matching process, we use the match recognize clause. The source data that will be searched is the table ticker listed in the from clause. The first step in building our match recognize clause is to organize our data set by partitioning it into logical groups. 
In this case, we'll split the data based on ticker name using the partition by clause. And within each partition, we will sort the data by time using the order by clause. The next step is to define the pattern for our W shape. In this case, we need to look for four specific data points and these points need to occur in, the, in a specific order. Therefore, our pattern clause is X plus, followed by Y plus, followed by W plus, followed by Z plus. What do X, Y, W and Z represent? Using the define clause, we need to specify what each of the four patterns is. In this case, X is an event where the price is less than the previous price. And this is the first leg of our W shape as shown in the graph. Y is defined as an event where the price is greater than the previous price. And finally, W and Z simply repeat the first two patterns to complete the W shape as shown here. So now we've created the pattern and defined the elements within that pattern. Now we need to determine the outputs or measures that will be returned each time a match is found. In this example, we want to return the start date and the end date of the pattern. Therefore, as X defines the pattern at the start of the W shape, we need the date from the first instance of X, which is shown as first X dot time. Z defines the end pattern of our W shape, so we need to know when that pattern finally ends, we need to extract the last date relating to Z, which is shown as last Z dot time. We can control the level of detail returned by the match recognize command. And in this case, we want to return a single row for each match. The alternative is to return all rows for each match, which will create a much more detailed report. The table at the top of the screen shows the output from our match recognize clause. There are two W shaped patterns in our data set. So there are two rows in the output as shown here. Now we've determined what we're going to output and the level of detail. The next step is to find the patterns that last seven days or less and calculate the average price. To limit the results to those patterns that last seven days or less, we just add a new criteria to our define clause using the Z dot time and X dot time data points as shown at the bottom of the statement in bold. And finally, we calculate the average price during the final phase of the W shape pattern using the standard SQL syntax of average. And then we have our match recognize clause to search for a W shape pattern that lasts for seven days or less and outputs the start date, end date and the average price during the final up phase of the pattern. So during this quick podcast, we've reviewed why pattern matching is so important and looked at a real world case from the telecommunications industry. Finally, we've explored the new 12C match recognize clause that allows us to search for sophisticated patterns using SQL. In the next podcast, we'll look at the syntax of this new clause in more detail and do some demos using our ticker stream dataset.